Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and today I will be showing you how to download, install, and set up the Feed the Beast launcher on Mac OS so that you can play the latest and greatest Stone Block 3, and look, there it is. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward. I will note before we get started, though, that if you need to do this on Windows or Linux, I'll have uh, guides for each of those operating systems launching around the same time as this video, and I'll have those linked in the description. So to get started, what you want to do is check the first link in the description, and that'll take you not only to the Feed the Beast website, but it'll actually take you to this tab, uh, which is the app tab where you can download it. Now, by default, it should show you the Mac OS download. If not, you can hit this arrow and you can find the Linux, Mac and Windows downloads located right here. And like I say, I will have guides for Windows and Linux linked in the description. You can also see here that it says it's built on Overwolf platform on Windows only. So that's right. If you're on Mac OS or Linux, you don't have to put up with the digital cancer that is Overwolf. Congratulations, everyone. Pat yourself on the back. So we're going to go ahead and click download for Mac OS. And when we do show, it should download. When you do show, words are difficult. It should download pretty quickly, depending on your internet speed. And I'm using Firefox, so you can actually see the download happening right up here. If you're using something like Chrome or Edge, I believe you'll see it down here. And really, you should be using Firefox, though. Now we're going to go to our downloads. And in fact, I've already got them open in another tab. So I'm just going to go ahead and close my browser. And then I am going to bring my download screen right over here. And I'm going to take the file. And just for the simplicity of this, I'm going to put it on my desktop so we can close this. And there's the file that we downloaded. To run it, we're going to double click it. So what you got right here is a pretty standard Mac install. We're going to grab this here. It doesn't quite fit in the box properly, but we're going to grab FTB app and drag it over to applications and release. And I held it there a little too long, so it actually opened up the browser window in the background there. We're gonna, we're gonna close that. But you might have heard the little sound effect letting us know that that was successful. So actually we can go ahead and close this now. So you can navigate to your applications folder and inside you will find the FTB app. We can double click it to launch. And then while that launches, we can close the application window. And FTB cannot be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. You're going to see this. It happens. What you're going to want to do is first off, just click OK. And then we're going to go up here to the Apple and we're going to go to system settings. Then what you're going to want to do is go to privacy and security. And under the security section, it's going to see FTB app was blocked from use because it is not from an identified developer. Click open anyway, and it'll prompt you to enter your password. Once you've entered your password, it'll ask you one last time, are you really sure you want to do this? And we're going to go ahead and click open. And then you're going to want to be patient because this might take a while. And after a bit of patience, there we are, we are in. Now on first boot, it might take a while for everything to load in, but eventually you'll have your featured mod packs listed here under home. If you go to library, this is where all of your installed Minecraft instances will be located once we start installing some. Next up, we have browse where we can search for different mod packs and install them by clicking the giant green button, but we're not there yet. And then afterwards, you've got discover news settings, boring stuff. What we want to do is go down here to this sign into your Microsoft account button, and we want to click on that. That'll prompt us to either sign in using a Mojang account, which is being discontinued on March 10th or with a Microsoft account. So we're going to select Microsoft account because I've already migrated my account. If you've not, obviously do Mojang. So Mac OS is actually going to prompt us to allow a renderer app to run. We're going to go ahead and click allow. And then once again, we're going to select Microsoft. So that'll take us to a screen where we will enter our username, our password. And if we have two factor authentication enabled, we'll have to go through that as well. But go ahead and sign in. Once you have signed in, it'll verify waiting for response. And then any moment now you'll get a big message that says you're set. So we can click finish. And now we can start downloading mod packs. If Stoneblock 3 is not already visible, you can type in up here and search for it, but it's new, it's recent, it's pretty hot. So it's the very top of our options. We're gonna click the green button here to begin the installation process. Now we'll prompt you to select a version to install and by default, the latest stable version will be selected. You can go back to previous stable versions or you can live life on the wild side and show unstable versions. And that can be fun, but we're not going to do that today. So we're going to leave that off. We're going to leave the latest stable version selected and we're going to click install and it'll begin the installation process. At first, it might not seem like this is doing anything. It takes a while to get going. And then when it does get going, it's going to be downloading a lot. So it'll vary by your uh, internet speed, how long it takes, but 
be prepared to wait a little bit or quite a bit. Once it is finished downloading, it'll look something like this and you can click go to instance to go to it immediately. Now, if you don't know how to get here in the future, you're going to want to go to library and then click on stone block three. Before we hop into it, and we could hop into it by just hitting play, but I'm actually going to go over here to settings and you can see here that we have the option to adjust our memory. Now, by default, it's six gigabytes, and I wouldn't recommend trying to run it any lower than that because this is a pretty hefty mod pack, but you can make adjustments here if you need to. And before you just grab that slider and go all the way to the max with it and say, ha the most powerful <laughs> mod pack ever. No, don't do that. You, you might have some issues. I recommend never going over half of what your system has. So if you have four gigs of RAM, you can set it to two and give it a red hot go. If you have eight, four is what I would recommend, but you could probably take it up to six and be fine. And then of course, if you have 16 gigabytes of memory, crank that sucker up to eight gigabytes and really beyond that, it does vary based on pack, but you're not gonna notice much of a difference if you assign it more memory than that. It's possible that if you use a really big fat resource pack that hogs a bunch of memory, you might get a benefit from turning it up some. I know that I had a particular mod pack with a really heavy resource pack that absolutely guzzled 12 gigs of memory. It was crazy, but usually you're not gonna see a big performance improvement by cranking this up too much. Of course, I have 32 gigs of memory, so I mean, it doesn't hurt to just set it to 10 and call it a day, am I right? And of course, it'll save whatever changes you make automatically. You don't have to push any buttons or anything. Just go back to instance and click on play. Now, this might be the last time you are prompted to allow or deny access to anything. If you want this particular pack to work correctly, you're gonna to wanna to click allow here. Now, how long this takes does depend on a number of circumstances, but primarily the power of your computer. So I've done this twice today already. I don't know what order these videos will be going out, but I did this on my PC running Windows, I did it on my PC running Linux, and now I'm doing it on my Mac Studio. And so far, they've all taken about the same amount of time. And there we go, we now have Stoneblock 3 launched. And I wanna note that if it doesn't launch, it might be because you have the wrong version of Java. So you can have multiple versions installed on your computer. In my experience, Stoneblock 3 really likes Java 17 the most. Uh, it should work with 18 and 19 as well, but in terms of broad compatibility across multiple different systems and operating systems, Java 17 has been the most solid for me. But there you go. You're now set up with Stoneblock 3. You're ready to play on Mac OS. And of course, if you want directions for Windows, or Linux, you can find those linked in the description of this video down below. Until next time, thank you folks for watching. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.